Wir. Who likes to read adventure books? I guess individuals who are into reading and adventures are likely the ones to read adventure novels. Other potential candidates include those who have been bitten by the adventure bug, but don't have either the time or money to actually go on a trip. Do people prefer adventure novels or adventure movies? Generally speaking, I think men and women love seeing an adventure unfold on the big screen more than reading about it on the pages, because that way they can take in all the breathtaking scenery as well as experience the thrilling feelings as if they were embarking on the journey themselves. Rather than having to resort to their imagination, why do people like to read adventure books rather than take an adventure? I believe there are some individuals who indeed prefer reading about adventures to going on one themselves because it means they can experience all the fun. Even just to some extent, from the comfort of their own home, without having to go through all the trouble in the outside world. Which is more effective: print ads, magazines, newspapers, or online? In this day and age, I believe that online advertising is significantly more effective. Than traditional print ads because consumers are always online, while the populations of TV viewers and magazine readers are fast decreasing. How do advertisements convince people to buy things? There are so many sophisticated marketing tactics, usually employed by brands, to attract buyers. I can't even count. The foolproof strategy is to hire celebrities to promote the product, so that dedicated fans would flock to buy whatever it is the company is selling. Other tricks include to emphasize or even to exaggerate the quality of the items, or to、uh, use attractive models. To、um, get people's attention. Do you think there is more advertising nowadays compared to the past? Absolutely. These days, advertisements and commercials are placed everywhere on every channel possible, from traditional places like bus stops and billboards to more modern arenas like social networking signs or streaming platforms. The amount is staggering, drastically more than what used to be in the old days. Do all companies need to advertise to attract customers? No, not really. There are indeed some high-end brands like Gucci or Hermes、uh, that are so prestigious they need no advertising whatsoever. In their cases, the product. Speaks for itself, which affluent buyers are more than willing to pay thousands, if not millions, of dollars to acquire. Who complains more, young people or old people? In my opinion, young generations tend to complain and criticize more than older citizens, and the reason is. Probably that they get upset easily when things don't go their way, since they haven't gone through as many hardships in life as the seniors. What type of complaints do you prefer? Writing letters or face to face? 
Personally, I prefer to voice my complaint in person because I think it's much more direct and also I can get an immediate response from the listener regarding my problem. In some cases, people should complain face to face. What do you think? I completely agree. In certain situations, it's a more effective strategy to、uh, complain in person because that way both parties, i.e., the person who is making the complaint and、uh, the recipient, can、uh, communicate constantly, greatly increasing the chance of the issue at hand being resolved. Do you think that businesses should respond to the complaints from customers? Why? Yes, I think it is absolutely crucial that brands not only deal with customers' complaints but do so in a timely and satisfactory manner, because customers spend their hard-earned money on the company's products and services, creating revenue for the firm. So it's the firm's responsibility to provide perfect customer service, including answering whatever concern that buyers might have. Do you want to have conversations with people? Yes, I do, but not just for the sake of socializing or having mindless chit chat. I make a point of only carrying out meaningful dialogues and talks with others, where we can exchange useful information and insights about work and other important aspects in life. Do you think it is difficult for adults to have conversations with children? To some extent, yes, because the gap between their levels of cognitive ability is so vast. Little boys and girls. Are likely unable to grasp the concepts and logic deemed utterly、uh, simple by、uh, grown-ups. Meanwhile,、um, adults might struggle to understand the imaginative way of thinking of kids. In consequence, it might be hard for them to be on the same page. Do you think that a good public debate person should take a side or be neutral? Hmm. I think it would probably resonate better with the target audience if the speaker expressed his view passionately and stood his ground. Given that he had strong arguments and proof to back up his claims. Among many questions that the world is facing today, do you think that it will finally come to an agreement? I'm afraid it won't. Um, there are eight billion people in the world right now, and we all come from different backgrounds and hold vastly different values and opinions. So I think it would be virtually impossible for us to find common ground. How do you usually make important decisions in your life? When it comes to deciding on something important, such as what training course to take or what career path I should pursue, I make a point of doing intensive research about、uh, available options. Then I carefully weigh their pros and cons before making up my mind about the best way to go forward. Do you think it's important to listen to other people's opinions before making a decision? Why or why not? Not always, but I think it can be immensely beneficial to go to those with good knowledge on the issue you are dealing with, so that you can ask them for advice. By and large, I believe the more input you have, the better decision you can make. Do you think it's better to make decisions based on logic or emotions? Why? I believe nine out of ten cases. We should make up our mind rationally, because emotions are highly likely to cloud our judgment. In other words, when we're emotional, more often than not, we will make the wrong choices. Whereas, using our brain, we can analyze data strategically, which tends to help us 
come to the right conclusion. What factors do you consider when making a big purchase decision, such as buying a car or a house? There are indeed several aspects I often care about when making a big investment on something. They primarily include the brand, the quality, and the price of the item in question. But the larger the purchase, the more features I might take into consideration, like、um, the financial vehicles. I can use to fund the purchase or the available payment options. What kinds of decisions do people usually make in their daily life? On a daily basis, men and women have to make up their mind on a variety of issues, from、um, some task as simple as what to get for breakfast. To a more complicated endeavor like how to deal with their colleagues and superiors at work. What should people do when making a hard decision? In my opinion, when you're faced with a difficult、uh, challenge, it's probably wise to gather as much information as possible and take time to carefully analyze all the input. It's better to sleep on it than to make a rash decision. Do you think it is easier to make a decision by yourself or by discussing it with others? Essentially, I think it depends on the situation and your personal preference. But、uh, generally speaking, I think it's probably recommended to bounce your ideas off others. So that you can listen to their feedback and insight, which can help you make a better decision faster. Why do you think many young people don't like to follow their parents' advice? Ah, this is such a contemporary issue. I suspect that a large number of youngsters are not big on taking their mom's and dad's advice. Because they see the guidance as outdated. In other words,、um, they believe that their parents' way of thinking might have been right in the past, but they don't necessarily apply to their current situation. Do you agree that companies will only protect the environment if they are forced to do so? I believe that this statement holds true in most cases, because business enterprises tend to solely care about the bottom line, their revenue. So unless they are required by law, I think they are highly unlikely to volunteer to implement costly environment protection strategies in their day-to-day -day operation. In what ways can air pollution be reduced effectively? There are a wide range of methods that can be deployed to tackle air pollution. One is to limit the number of vehicles that use fossil fuels by encouraging citizens to drive electronic motorbikes and cars, or better yet, to use public transport altogether. Other tactics are banning household use of natural gas. And、uh, making recycling mandatory. Who should motivate citizens to exercise? Governments, parents, or schools? All things considered, I think that it should be the parents' responsibility to urge their children to exercise, because they are the primary guardians, and hence they should. Care about the health and well-being of their little boys and girls the most. Some people say sports are so competitive, and this can affect children. What do you think? Well, if you ask me, I would say that I disagree with the statement as well. I believe that a sport itself isn't inherently too competitive. What's more, I am sure that the adults. In charge of organizing sport activities and events for six or seven euros, know to、uh, keep everything in check to make sure that the participants 
won't get hurt, whether physically or mentally. Many athletes are being paid a million dollars, like footballers. Why is it acceptable? I think that although a million dollars seems like an unbelievably large amount of payment for just an individual, these、uh, talented and popular players, in turn, bring in billions of dollars in profit for their sport teams as well as the brands who sponsor them. So I would say it's a fair deal. Many believe sports now are all about marketing, brand deals, etc. Do you think it is true? I don't completely agree with this statement. Yes, I'm aware that huge amounts of funds are being invested by commercial brands in well-known sport events such as the Super Bowl or the World Cup. I have faith that athletes. Know their responsibility not only to stay true to themselves, but also to celebrate real sportsmanship. Therefore, they will not,、um, they will refrain from getting swayed by the sponsors, no matter how much money they are paying. Why are some children popular at school? Some kids might be more popular at school thanks to their good looks or excellent academic achievements. Those who enjoy the basketball team also tend to attract a good deal of attention from their schoolmates. So, generally speaking, I believe that、uh, students who stand out one way or another are likely. To be admired by their peers. Are celebrities happy with their life? I'm not sure. On the one hand, I think they should be, since they have it all, enjoying incredible amounts of money and fame, and living life in the fast lane. But on the other hand, they might be、um, miserable, being under intense scrutiny from the media and the public all the time. Why do some people become famous? I think that a number of exceptional individuals make a name for themselves thanks to their talent in their respective fields. For example, singers get famous for their mesmerizing voices. Actors become、uh, well known for their amazing acting chops, while、um, authors. Rise to fame if they have at least one best-selling book. Is a popular teacher always a good teacher? It's not always the case. These days, some mediocre teachers might find their popularity for all the wrong reasons. For example, their good looks or their sense of humor, which have nothing to do with their expertise. Is it easy to become popular today? In some way, it is. In this day and age, it couldn't be easier for men and women to create great content that showcases their talent with the help of cutting-edge gadgets like smartphones or tablets, as well as state-of-the-art software and applications to edit their videos. Consequently,、uh, some people might become an overnight sensation. If their videos or posts went viral on social networking platforms like TikTok or Facebook, why is fashion very important to some people? Because some men and women are highly meticulous about how they present themselves to the world. They would like to look nice and trendy to make a good impression with their put-together outfit. Are older people as fashionable as young people? Why? By and large, I think the elderly are noticeably less sophisticated than youngsters when it comes to fashion. The biggest reason is probably that、um, they have more important things to care about, like finance, investing, or social issues.、Um, that's why they are not that invested. In following the latest trend or getting their hands on chic 
clothing items. Are there many people growing their own vegetables now? I think so. From what I've been observing, people, especially those who live in the city, are growing their gardens of greens and fruit so that they can enjoy fresh produce every day instead of having to settle for store-bought alternatives, which are probably not as good and definitely pricier. Do you think it's good to let kids learn how to plant? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I'm a strong advocate of encouraging children to be taught this skill set. Because when they learn to tend to flowers or cactuses, for example, not only can they、uh, grasp the knowledge of biology firsthand, but they are also likely to、uh, appreciate the hard work of farmers who dedicate their life to growing food for us more. What do you think of the job of a farmer? Personally. I see it as one of the hardest jobs in the world. Farmers brace the elements day in and day out, working on the field, growing crops of rice and wheat, raising cattle and pigs in order to provide us delicious and nutritious food. It's greatly physically demanding, I bet. What are the differences between traditional and modern agriculture? The most notable upgrade is probably the application of cutting-edge technologies. For instance, instead of exhausted workers、uh, planting the seeds and watering the crops, now these labor-intensive tasks can be delegated to farm machinery. As a result, not only is productivity、um, increased considerably. But the workload for human is also reduced significantly. Why do we like free gifts? Because they are free of charge. Obviously, I believe that literally every person loves to be the recipient of a present, regardless of value. If we don't have to pay for it, it's a no-brainer. Why do restaurants and shopping centers give free gifts? Is part of their marketing scheme.、Um, those establishments want to make their customers happy with complimentary dishes or cosmetics samples first and foremost. Furthermore,、um, it is an effective strategy to promote new products. Do freebies really turn into motivation for customers to revisit? Not always, but they can be. If the free gifts are of good quality. Chances are, customers might want to go back to the store to make a bigger purchase. Do you think in the future people will get more advice from computers than humans? I wholeheartedly believe that that scenario is on the horizon. In this day and age, technology is advancing so fast. I'm sure one day machines will become smarter than all of us. On every front imaginable, and we will go to them for advice and recommendations. Why is receiving advice from professionals expensive? Because of their valuable knowledge and expertise, these brilliant individuals are able to give us useful insight and help us solve our problems in a way that friends and family members can't. That's why charging extra is justified. How do professionals receive advice? I think experts likely bounce their ideas off each other so as to solve their own problem. Besides, they might go to their mentors, who are even more knowledgeable if the matter is above their own level. Should countries spend money on education or hospitals? Ideally, I think governments should strive to allocate efficient funding to both areas. But if I had to choose one, I would say money needs to be dedicated to healthcare first, because the public's well-being is of prominent importance. Should countries spend money on art? I guess in the ideal scenario, when 
all the important aspects such as healthcare and education are already taken care of, it would be greatly beneficial for the general public if、um, well known art pieces were acquired by governments to be put in galleries and public venues for everyone to see. What should the state do to improve the area people live in? In order to revamp residential areas dramatically, large amounts of funding need to be invested to improve or upgrade the facilities and amenities, especially in communal living spaces and apartment buildings. On top of that, security should be enhanced by increasing police patrol, hence, reducing crime rates. To ensure a safe living environment, should everyone know history? Absolutely. I think every single person on earth should at least know the history of their region or country so that they can appreciate what their ancestors sacrificed to build what they have today and honor their roots. On top of that, it would be commendable. If individuals learned world history too, in what ways can children learn history? In my opinion, there are indeed several ways kids can learn this subject. Officially, they are required to take history lessons at school. What's more, it would be advisable for regular field trips to famous historic sites to be incorporated into the curriculum. Another method might be. To let them watch historical documentaries during class or break time. What are the differences between learning history from books and from videos? There are stark differences between the two strategies. Personally, I feel like watching historical videos and films are considerably more effective in helping learners visualize the events of the past. Hence. Making them better understand and remember. On the opposite side, history books tend to include an overwhelming amount of facts and figures, which is hard to digest, especially in short periods of time. Is it difficult to protect and preserve historic buildings? I believe it is relatively challenging to maintain the pristine conditions of ancient buildings. Because they are always exposed to the elements, and naturally, any piece of construction is gonna deteriorate over time. Who should be responsible for protecting historic buildings? By and large, I think it should be the state's responsibility when it comes to the preservation of historic buildings and constructions, because not only are they Part of the country's culture, but the government also has all the authority and resources needed at their disposal to do so. What kind of job do you think will be popular in the future? Why? Given the way things are going, especially with the unprecedented rise of social media, I suspect in the future. Men and women would rush into the content creation field. The first reason is that it's massively easy these days to write an engaging post or make an、uh, interesting video from the comfort of your own couch with the help of all the smart gadgets out there. What's more,、um, the profit one can make from these kinds of jobs. Like vloggers or influencers is really to die for. What do you think are the benefits of having a steady job? Well, there are quite a few advantages of having a secure occupation. First, you can count on a stable source of income, which more or less helps with paying the bills. Second, it can create a sense of routine and familiarity, giving you some peace of mind. Which can be especially helpful for those who are afraid of change and instability. Last but not least, it enables you to、uh, pursue 
various pastimes such as traveling or working out. Is it better to work for a big company or a small company? Why? To tell you the truth, I think it depends on an individual's personal objectives. However, I guess that the majority of workers would love to be employed by a large corporation, because enterprises of that scale often、uh, provide staff with good pay and excellent fringe benefits, such as health care and paid vacations. What do you think are the most important skills for getting a good job? I believe that there are a couple of skills deemed the most crucial in securing a decent job. First, it's communication skills, since one needs to be able to persuade the employer to hire him in the first place, and then to work well with his colleagues over the course of his tenure. Besides,、um, time management skills. Are probably just as important as employees are expected to carry out, as well as to accomplish a wide range of tasks successfully at the same time. Do you think people are born to be leaders? Why? Why not? No, I don't think all leaders are born. Many individuals might have this innate ability to lead since birth. But I also have seen brilliant men and women, like presidents or corporate executives, who work hard and train themselves to acquire exceptional leadership skills. Can leadership skills be taught? Why? Why not? One hundred percent. I believe that anyone can become a great leader by enrolling in training courses or programs. Leadership, just like any other skill set. Essentially, can be taught and learned through relevant lessons and continuous practice. Why are elected politicians often so unpopular? This is such a fitting question in the current political climate. I guess in some cases,、um, elected politicians or government officials might be more or less unpopular with the public. If they have a、uh, controversial stance on a certain social issue, or they are just incompetent at their job, what should a leader do to remain popular? Well, I think that if leaders wish to be loved and admired by others, not only do they need to set a good example in everything they do, but they also should try to take good care of. Their followers. In the case of a CEO, for example,、um, he or she is recommended to、uh, treat the staff well and provide them with good pay and fringe benefits. Do you think unelected heads of state are a good idea? Why? Why not? Absolutely not. I believe that if heads of state, like presidents or prime ministers, were appointed by default instead of going through a fair election, they would not be supported by the public at all. In consequence, they wouldn't be able to govern the country effectively. In your opinion, what qualities a political leader should have? Personally, I think a political leader. Needs to have a strong moral compass first and foremost, so he or she will strive to always do the right thing. What's more, this person should have empathy and、uh, keep the public's interests at heart at all time. Last but not least, the commander in chief. Is supposed to have a certain level of competence when it comes to governing the country and solving social issues. Do you think that people are more likely to believe true or false information these days? It's hard to tell because it depends on the individual's ability to differentiate between truths and lies. But generally. I believe that educated men and women 
will not easily buy into fabricated stories. What are some of the consequences of misinformation in society? There are so many detrimental consequences that misinformation can bring. The worst one is probably that it tempers with our judgment, affecting citizens' ability to make the right decisions, as evidenced by the U.S. presidential election in 2018. Furthermore, someone's reputation could be destroyed beyond repair if damaging rumors about him or her were spread widely. How do you verify the accuracy of information that you come across online? My rule of thumb is I only trust a news story if it appears on an official news website. Therefore, when I come across an intriguing piece of information on the internet, especially on social media, what I do is I double check on credible channels like CNN or the New York Times. Are there any news sources that you trust more than others? Why or why not? Yes, definitely. I indeed have more faith in prestigious news outlets than in social networking sites. Because literally everyone can post on Facebook and there's virtually no oversight to the credibility of information. Meanwhile, articles published on international sites like The Guardian or The Washington Post are written by professional reporters and journalists. On top of that, they are meticulously fact-checked by seasoned editors-in-chief to ensure the highest level of accuracy. Should schools teach critical thinking skills to help students better evaluate information? Why or why not? Absolutely. I think it's imperative that students be taught critical thinking skills in educational institutions like schools and universities so that they can be properly equipped to analyze information and determine for themselves whether or not it is accurate. What do young people like to save money to buy? I think young men and women tend to save up for trendy clothing items, high-end cosmetics products, and state-of-the-art gadgets. In other words, they are majorly fascinated with things that can either enhance their appearance or make their life easier. Is it better to spend money or save money? Huh. It's like comparing apples to oranges. To me, um, those two activities should happen in tandem, and we should try our best to excel at both. Learning to spend money wisely while building a habit of saving up for a rainy day. Should parents give money to children? Personally, I'm against the idea of giving little children pocket money as I think they are too young to know how to use the fund efficiently. I believe it would be better if moms and dads provided their kids with necessary items such as clothes or books instead. When do children learn about money? I think, in Vietnam at least, uh, there is no official age when lessons about money and personal finance are taught to young students. In fact, it varies widely uh, from family to family, region to region. But, generally speaking, parents tend to teach um, their kids how to spend money sensibly when the boys and girls start middle school. What will children learn when saving money? When girls and boys start saving money, by having a piggy bank, for example, they can learn to acquire essential virtues. First and foremost, um, it's discipline, as they'll be trained to make a habit of putting aside a fixed proportion of their pocket money on a regular basis. What's more, it's patience, since they have to wait for their fund to accumulate and turn into a significant amount over time. Do you think money can buy happiness? 
I don't think money can buy happiness, but I do believe money or a healthy source of income, to be specific, enables men and women to live a decent life, giving us some peace of mind so that we can pursue true happiness. What kind of movies are popular in your country? As far as I know, Vietnamese moviegoers seem to be drawn to comedies and romantic films the most. As a matter of fact, titles of those genres often attract huge groups of people to the theater whenever they are released. Are historical films popular in your country? Why? I don't think so. Historical dramas or period pieces tend to be inferior to other genres like comedy or action in Vietnamese theaters. I suspect it's due to the fact that not only is the subject matter quite heavy, but it also requires a certain amount of knowledge in the field in order to be able to grasp the significance of the script, which seems to be more than one would bargain for when he goes to the movies. Does a successful movie always have famous actors? Not necessarily. While a good quantity of blockbusters tend to do well at the box office because of the star-studded cast, some indie films starring unknown actors did make waves in the cinematic world thanks to their intriguing scripts and superb acting. Do you think actors have a lot of money? The ultra-famous ones do, I bet. But as far as I know, um, the vast majority are still struggling to make ends meet, taking up all kinds of odd jobs to support themselves while going on endless auditions in the hopes of landing an acting gig. Do you believe in movie reviews? I don't think I do. I believe that every viewer has his or her own take which doesn't necessarily reflect the true quality of a title. In fact, I try my best to avoid reading movie reviews before going to the theater so that I wouldn't be affected by others' opinions. Should I read the review before going to see a movie? You probably should, but only if you're able to find high-quality reviews. What I mean by that is in-depth pieces written by professional critics that can offer great insight into the general theme as well as the quality of the cast acting, which can help you decide whether or not the flick is up your alley. What is the difference between watching movies in the theater versus at home? There are quite a few differences, I believe. When going to see a movie at the theater, you can enjoy the vivid colors projected on the big screen. Besides, the sound is likely to be significantly enhanced thanks to all the cutting-edge equipment at the venue. Meanwhile, watching a movie at home allows you to immerse yourself completely in the story without any distraction. Do you think old people and young people can share interests? Definitely. Although I admit it might be hard due to the generation gap, however, I also believe that when people of all ages take time to sit down with each other and learn about one another's hobbies and interests, we can all get along well. What can old people teach young people? I think senior citizens have a lot to teach younger generations. First and foremost, they can impart wisdom on the subjects of history and culture. Besides, on a daily basis, they can tell us a thing or two about how to conduct ourselves in a dignified manner. What can young people teach the old? Oh, normally we talk about the other way around. I guess young men and women can pass on their knowledge about technology to the elderly and help them catch up with advanced developments and inventions. Ultimately, the former can explain to the latter how to navigate social media and how to use a wide range of cutting-edge devices. 
What are the most popular activities for young people to do in their free time nowadays? These days, there are plenty of exciting pastimes that young men and women can take part in to entertain themselves. Some of the most common options include talking with friends on social media, going to live concerts, or working out at the gym. For tech fans, meanwhile,、um, their favorite hobby is probably playing a virtual reality game on their electronic device. What are the differences between what young people do during their free time nowadays compared to the past? In the old days, young individuals used to carry out simple activities like reading comic books or going to the movies. Now, the hobbies and pastimes are much more sophisticated and high tech. Many men and women spend most of their time scrolling down their news feed on Facebook or watching short videos on TikTok. Do you think that schools should have breaks between lessons? Definitely, students are entitled to some downtime after each class so that they can relax and unwind for a bit. Maybe having a sip of water or a tasty snack to refill their energy before getting back to learning. Why do more and more people live in the city? In my opinion, men and women these days. Up to live in the metropolis for the wide range of great perks that city dwelling can offer, from abundant job opportunities to high living standards. Besides,、um, they can enjoy all kinds of exciting leisure activities like going to the mall or going to the movies. What are some factors that attract people to settle down in certain places? There are indeed. Several qualities that can lure individuals to a particular neighborhood. First of all, I think everyone loves a friendly and safe living environment with low crime rates. Another big draw might be the abundance of essential services and amenities, including schools, hospitals, markets, or supermarkets. What are the differences between the young and old when choosing where to live? I believe the priorities and preferences of two groups differ widely when it comes to accommodation. While youngsters gravitate towards hip, bustling areas like the city center, where there are plenty of interesting places to visit and a wide range of exciting activities to do, the elderly tend to favor quiet and calm. Regions such as the outskirts of town. How do your friends influence your shopping choice? To a very limited extent, I have to say, I'm so sure about my sense of style. I'm usually not affected by others' opinions. Every now and then, I might ask my close friends for recommendations on big purchases like household appliances. But other than that, I just choose whatever catches my eye. What are the things young people like to buy? Hmm. Generally speaking, I guess young individuals love to get their hands on hip, shiny items like clothing of the latest trend or cutting-edge gadgets, most notably smartphones. Why do big companies introduce new products so often? I believe huge commercial brands like Apple or Zara make a point of bringing new offerings to the market constantly because they want to keep buyers interested, want to keep them coming back for more, and hence increasing sales. Do you think online shopping will replace in-store shopping in the future? Why? Possibly. In a distant future, when ordering on e-commerce websites gets as easy as a click of the mouse, and shopping can be done in a matter of hours or even instantaneously, I believe that the traditional way of going to the store to get something will be completely eliminated. What is the relationship between shopping and the economy of your country? Wow, that's quite an advanced question, isn't it? In my opinion, 
shopping or consumerism plays a critical role in shaping Vietnam's economy because the FMCG or fast moving consumer goods sector accounts for one of the largest proportions of our GDP or gross domestic product. As a result, the more people shop, the higher the economic growth rate will be. Do Vietnamese people mostly use cash or other payments? I believe in my country, cash is still by far the most popular payment option, despite the constant introduction of more modern and high-tech alternatives like e-wallets or credit cards. The reason is that the vast majority of populations are so used to the old-fashioned method, they don't see any need to change. Do you think we will stop using paper money in the future? In a distant future, yes. However, I suspect that not only do payment processors need to come up with a method greatly more convenient than cash, but it's also going to take quite some time for both sellers and buyers to get used to such a cashless system. Have you ever learned about outer space and stars? Not formally. If I remember correctly, I didn't learn about this subject at school when I was little, but at the present, I find the topic so intriguing. I have started to watch short videos on YouTube and read articles about the universe, outer space, stars, and planets. What would you do if you had the chance to go into space? If I had an opportunity to be sent into space on a state-of-the-art spaceship designed by a tech giant like Blue Origin or SpaceX, I would probably bring a camera along to capture the whole trip as well as to take as many pictures as possible so that I could show my friends and family about the one-in-a-lifetime experience later on. Is it important to take photos while traveling? To tell you the truth, I don't think it's that important unless you're a journalist or a travel blogger, for example. Other than that, I believe it's perfectly fine, even if you have nothing to show for your adventure later on. As long as you enjoy it and get to explore new places. Can you trust other people's travel journals on the internet? When it comes to online posts, I think it would be wise to treat them with caution since people have a tendency to brag or exaggerate things on social media just for the clout. What factors affect how people feel about traveling? In my opinion, there are a wide range of aspects that can influence a traveler's experience, including the quality of accommodation, transportation, and food. First and foremost, What's more, the people they encounter on their trip might have an impact as well. For example, service providers such as street vendors, waiters in restaurants and cafes, the managers and staff of the hotel they stay at, and let's not forget the fellow travelers they meet along the way. Would you go to a foreign country to travel because of the distinct landscape? Possibly. If it's deemed a sight to see and I could afford to go, I would travel overseas to check it out. In fact, traveling is one of my favorite hobbies and I'm always finding an excuse to go on a trip. Which is the most popular water sport in your country? To my knowledge, rowing is probably the most popular water sport in Vietnam. I remember seeing a great number of rowing competitions from time to time, especially on special holidays such as the Lunar New Year's Festival. Do you think schools should teach students to swim? Why? Yes, and I would even go as far as to suggest that swimming should be made compulsory at school, since I believe that it is one of the most essential life skills that one needs to have. Are there many schools teaching swimming? I'm not sure about the exact statistics, 
but I can see that more and more schools are incorporating swimming lessons into their curricula, especially at private schools where there is ample funding for state-of-the-art facilities and equipment, as well as qualified instructors. Do you think it is necessary for everyone to learn to swim? In all honesty, I don't think every single human being on Earth must learn how to swim because it would be completely useless for those who live in a landlocked country uh, and who would never go near a body of water in their entire life. But by and large, I think it's a beneficial ability to have. Do you think the government should spend money on developing facilities for water sports? I would say that it depends on the state of the country if there were plenty of funding left after appropriate amounts had been allocated to critical fields like healthcare or education, it would be great to have modern pools and water parks built so that citizens could be able to uh, do bungee jumping or kayaking, for example. What kinds of coworkers do people like to work with? I believe men and women prefer to work or collaborate with friendly and considerate colleagues who would give us a hand in finishing our assignments as well as to cooperate with us in a constructive manner on a team project. Which one is more important to you at work? Development in work-related skills or recognition from supervisors? In my case, I value recognition for my supervisors more, be it monetary rewards or just a simple praise, because it would give me motivation to work harder and get better at my job. Meanwhile, I'm perfectly capable of accumulating knowledge and acquiring various skills all by myself, so I don't see it as a priority at the office. Do you think managers should be friends with their subordinates? Personally, I don't think it's a good idea for managers and executives to become friends with their staff. Obviously, they can and should be friendly and understanding, but certain boundaries should be kept intact to ensure that people know their place and act professionally in the workplace.